Hi, I just woke up. I'm having my morning coffee. I feel really good about myself today. So I've decided that I'm gonna teach you about candle magic. I have a friend named Robin. She's been not feeling well. She had surgery and I'm gonna make her a special candle and it's gonna be a healing candle. I'm gonna make a candle from scratch and I'm gonna teach you how to do it too. But I also wanna show you the kind of candles I use if I'm not doing a special candle. So whenever I'm working with my spirits, I'm talking about my Orishas, my Loa, my ancestors. I have a tiny little tea light holder and a tea light. So 90% of the time when I'm working with spirit, I'm using a tea light because they're safe. You can put them out, light them, and within a couple of hours, they go out. And that's really all you need. You don't need to have elaborate candles all the time to work with your spirits or to be on your altar. All you need is a little tea light, and that's enough. If I'm gonna do a petition, I will get a seven-day glass candle. I use a lot of seven-day glass candles because you can pick them up at the dollar store. I don't go to the dollar store. I find them to be a little, that, that quality to be kind of cheap. These glass candles are sold at the grocery store around the corner from my house, so I'm really, really super lucky, and they're cheap. That's opposed to candles like this that you'll get in a Botanica. I had this candle. I thought I'd pull it out. I bought it a long time ago. These are the fancy candles. These are like the rich people candle, okay? Because if you go to Botanica, a candle like this is going to be like 10 bucks, or it could be more than that. Sometimes you will find these glass candles that are already fixed, okay? Or the people that have the Botanica will go ahead and do spell casting on them and they'll sell them ready to go. And those candles can be like $25, $30. But I stopped using those a long time ago because literally a white candle is the only kind of candle you need to do any working. You don't need a color candle to do any working. All you need is a regular white candle. So a white candle is an all-purpose candle. And finally, I have my taper candles, which I barely use, but I love making them. These are for when I want to be super fancy. I'll put this candle on some tin foil, sprinkle herbs on top, and then use another white candle to make the herbs stick. Those burn really, really, really cool. Um, and they're also kind of dangerous. So you got to make sure that you burn it far away from everything, okay? Or everything could go up in flames. But when I spell cast these days, for people, I actually make my own candles. So I get on um, line and I purchase uh, some soy wax. These are uh, American Soy Organics Midwest Container Soy Wax. Yes, that's a five pound bag, but that's gonna last me a really, really long time. I have a mason jar and a wick. When you buy a bag of wicks, they usually give you these little stickers that um, will keep the wick attached to the bottom of your glass. And I've got my magical powder. This is a perfect opportunity for me to talk about magical powders. Just like every other witch bitch out there, I have like my own like special concoctions that I make. They're like my, they're, they're like things that I make and I keep on hand. Protection powders, protection oils, ingredients to make a spiritual bath. I have like my go-to white bath that I do for people. I have a love bath. I actually sell these candles on my website. You should be using more powder in your spells. I know everybody has seen videos where a witch is standing outside of their house and they're holding cinnamon powder in their hand and they blow it into their home to bring prosperity and to bring luck and, and wealth and all of that stuff. But most people kind of like don't go beyond that. And I'm here to tell you that you can get um, arrowroot powder you can get um, all kinds of different powders. And if you're doing fire magic, you can actually blow um, your herb, your um, powdered herb into the fire when, if you're doing cauldron magic, which I do a lot of cauldron magic also. So this is gonna be a protective healing candle for my friend. When I decided that I was gonna actually make my own candles rather than you know, just fix a seven day candle for somebody, um, I did purchase some fragrance oil. Um, these are fragrance oils that you can put into your candles, into your soy candles that will give it an aroma. I love essential oils. Fragrance oils are not essential oils, okay? And I really don't like the smell of it. 
uh, or any of the ones that I, I, I tried. So all of my candles are scentless, which is actually really good because I like to burn different kinds of incense when I'm spell casting. And I use a lot of colognes like Florida water or, or, or any of the other. I can actually make a, um, a magical uh, spray. You just take a little bit of spring water um, into a spray bottle and then you put the essential oils that uh, you want to put in there, your magical essential oils, because yes, essential oils are still magical because they're plants. You make your synergy and then you spray it around your house. I'll do another video about that. All right, so here are the steps. I also practice magic in my kitchen. I can't be bothered with doing this at an altar. I'm a kitchen witch bitch. So I'm gonna take a black magic marker and I'm actually going to I know this looks really, really basic, but I am going to put a pentagram in the bottom of the, the glass with the intention that this candle is going to protect. And it's not going to be perfect because nothing I do is perfect. My magic is really sloppy. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is um, take some of this magical powder and I'm going to put it on top of this this pentagram. This is actually more than just a powder. There's actually some roots in here too. So as you can see, there's really not a lot. There's not a lot in there. Well, actually that is a lot. I lied. That is a lot for this size candle. I screwed up. I forgot a very, very important part <laughs> to put the wick in. You know, all I'm gonna do is get all my powder and herbs to one side of the candle. <laughs> my wood stick is gonna help me move all that to one side of the candle. Now I'm gonna take my little circular sticky thing and I'm gonna put it right in the middle I'm gonna put it right in the middle of my mason jar then I'm gonna take my wick and put it on top of that I'm gonna use my little stick here to press it on and make it stick wax is gonna go on top of this like in a matter of moments so it's just fine the other thing is we're just gonna put a little wax in the bottom and we gotta let that cool and off first and harden because I want all of my spell to stay at the bottom of the candle. I don't want it mixing throughout the entire candle because when she lights this candle, it's going to start burning. It's going to have intention in it. It's going to have the herbs, but the spell is going to get more intense the closer the flame gets to the herbs. So this is one of those spells that starts off really easy and ends with a bang. Okay, now I'm going to shake my herbs back up and blah, da, 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 da. No big deal. We're gonna melt this mother down. We're gonna melt this mother down. We're gonna melt this mother down. And here's the thing, it melts down really, really, really fast. And as soon as all the wax melts, we take it off the heat. So what I did next is I put just a little layer of that wax, just enough to cover my roots and cover my herbs. Now I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for a couple of minutes. Okay, it's nice and hard. Ha, huh. now it's time to add the rest of the wax. You okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. Now they make these cute little wood sticks with holes in them for you to put the wick through. And that just keeps the wick centered as the wax hardens up. And there you go. When you're um, settling the, the, the wood stick on top of your jar and you put the uh, wick through, you just got to be careful that you don't pull it. Okay, or else your wick is gonna come out and you'll be really, really, really mad. All right, I'm gonna set this over to the side on my altar and I'm gonna let the wax fully harden up and then I'll show you what the end result looks like. Well, looks like it's hard to me. Ta-da! So as you can see, a little bit of the herbs and roots kind of floated around and that's just fine. But the majority of the spell is in the bottom of the candle. Let's put the lid on it. And that's how I make my candles. And if you want to buy one of these candles, you can go to my website and buy one for yourself. Just go to my link tree, click on the link, click on products and services, and you can pick up one of these and send me a message about what kind of spell you want cast. Okay, bye!